Hi, this is Greg Koopman. This is part one of a series of videos I'm doing. In this video, I'm going to show you what my goal of the entire series is and, and try to explain to you at a high level what I was trying to achieve and how I achieved it. Okay, basically it's, it was very simple what I was trying to achieve. All I wanted to do was take my home computer set it up so that I had an easy way of accessing my Azure file share storage just like another drive. Basically a shared drive that I could just uh, map to a drive letter. That's all I wanted. So that whenever I worked on it I could say let's say a Y drive in this case um, and I wanted to open up a Word document I would just go ahead and click on open and browse and I could browse to my Y uh, to my Y um, folder which is my really my Azure uh, file share storage and just open up a file change make my changes and save it and it would just save it up directly up to file to Azure okay that's all I wanted to do very simple all right but uh, the solution was not so simple um, I wanted this very badly because I wanted to start using Azure a lot more in my lab labs um, to store my labs and have the backup and all the good stuff that Azure provides. Okay, so well, actually, let, let's actually look at an example. I do have a finished solution of how I wanted this to work. So let me just show you that. So if I go to my Y drive, what I really wanted to do was set up an, a file share just like this one in here, to my Y, to whatever letter I chose, and be able to just go in there, double click, and go to my users or whatever I did, go and open up my, open up my file, let's say this the file again, type in data warehouse manager 2, okay, and when I saved it, it would save it directly back to the Azure SQL, Azure Network Share. So if I went back in here, which is my Explorer that shows my uh, Azure Network Share, right? Right on the Azure, I open it up now, what I get is Data Warehouse Manager 2. So that's what I mean by seamless. I'm able to have a network share on my local computer that I can easily just go ahead and, and use files from, you know, place files in it uh, and take files from it, use them in my applications, make modifications, and it will just be seamless and just go right straight to that storage account uh, up in Azure just as if it was on my uh, local drive on my hard drive. Okay, that's what I wanted. That's the goal. Okay. So logically, the goal was simple. And you can look at it as I do in this diagram. But to get there wasn't as easy as that diagram. To get there, it was more like this diagram. Okay. But before I even show you that, let me show you what you might say. Well, Greg, you can easily do that in the Azure Storage Explorer. Well, no, you can't, okay? So let's say I go to Azure File, uh, the Azure Storage Explorer, and here's my um, storage account, okay? Um, test for share, okay? And I have set up a share, a bunch of share, a share called test, right? Okay, so let's take this. We're inside of Microsoft Azure Storage Explorer and I've gone to my test for share, which is, um, and so basically I've, I've gone into this directory called test users and I see weather.txt, right, a file. So if I double click on that, it opens up in notepad, okay? And it says sunny, but thunderstorms expected in the afternoon. Well, that looks promising, but, so let me put in a different note here, it says, and temperatures down to freezing. 
Okay, so now let me go ahead and say file save and close this. So where do you expect this to be? Do you think it's going to be saved back up here? No, it's not going to be saved back up there. It's saved somewhere locally, wherever I wanted to put it. So let's just double click on it and see if it did save what I did, even though it did say it's it saved, it would look like it did. But I open it again, and there it is. It's still sunny, but thunderstorms expected in the afternoon. That's what I'm talking about. That's a problem. That's not what I want to be have to do. I don't want to have to sit here and say, okay, um, let's go in and say, um, you know, temperature or something, right? Temperature. And then have to say file save as somewhere where's it going to save it uh, download save for azure all right so let me just put on my downloads and um i don't know let's just save it here and uh save now i have to go over there right to downloads say upload upload files go find it right to D, whatever it was, D downloads, right? Date modified, there it is. So now I'd have to come here and manually go through that route. Upload. Okay, now it's trying to upload. It gives me an error because it wants to auto resolve the behavior. Yes, replace items in the destination, apply. Okay, finally it gets there. Now it's there. Now my change got there because I had to go through that manual junk and I don't want to do that. I'm too busy. I have a lot to do. I don't have time to go through a bunch of manual stuff just to, you know, just to use this tool. Okay, I need it to be exactly like I'm saving it to my own hard drive. I'm, I'm opening it from my own hard drive, you know, with a drive letter. I need that. That's how I need to be efficient and productive. Okay, so that's what I'm trying to say that this this solution with the Microsoft Azure storage solution it's good if you're just doing one-off stuff and just saving some things up to you know Azure and that kind of thing or pulling some stuff down but as a just where you really just working with it like you want to just do your regular uh, use your regular applications like Word Excel you know SQL Server whatever you're doing okay I don't know about SQL Server but whatever you're doing um, you know you, you just want to make it a drive letter okay that mapped drive that's what you really want okay so anyways that's what i want to point out is that even though microsoft azure stores explorer is a nice little tool it's not going to get the job done for what i'm trying to do i don't want, it is not seamless one concept so the first thing was i couldn't use this azure stores explorer except for without a lot of manual effort okay so that was out of the question for what i wanted to do so the next thing I wanted to do was say I said to myself, okay, let's put let's put make a maybe we make a network share. They could have a network share up on Azure, right? That's a network share. I like try to create a, a share, all right. And what happened was that it would keep on erroring out. And after a long lots of work and lots of investigation, I found that what's occurring was a four four five error. Port four four five was being blocked. And it was being blocked by Comcast and these big providers on my internet. My internet providers were blocking it, and that's by design. They they by design they they block 445. Okay, so when I went down I went down a lot of rabbit holes there, and I just would I couldn't get that to work. I couldn't find any solutions for it. Um, I do have a um, web a, a link that I will provide you that talks about this. Uh, called how to connect to Azure File Share when SMB port 445 is being blocked by your ASP, and I, this didn't work either. So I couldn't get anything to work. All right. Um, so the next step was to since I couldn't get it going to I, I saw in that article uh, uh, in that link uh, something about point to site. So I decided well I'll try point to site and try to get that to work. Why don't I go ahead and maybe have like a, a computer up on the on Azure on Azure VM because Azure VM doesn't have to deal it it deals directly in the same virtual network space as the storage accounts so I don't have to go through like a Comcast or 
one of those providers that would block my internet connection. So what I did was I created this VM, right? So I went here and uh, and, and I was able to set up uh, a VM and then put a shared drive and assign it to the Azure File Share Storage, and that worked. So I was able to have a shared drive over on my um, storage, okay, over on my VM, which you see here. So if I, from here's my storage on Azure. So here's my whole Azure portal in the pink background. Here's my storage um, file share, which I want to store everything to. And so I created a virtual machine, a Windows Server 2016, and I went ahead and I <coughs> created a virtual network here, okay? And this was able to directly connect to the Azure Storage Gen 2 file share, which would look more like a dotted line from the share from this uh, VM, which is in the gold uh, octagon. And you could just imagine a, a dotted line down to the Azure storage file share. Okay, so this did have the file share set up. And I have that in another video um, in this series. Uh, then what I was going to do after that was I was going to then take that drive letter that I set up the share on and share that drive letter so that I could, and make that shared so I could access it from my Windows client computer. But that didn't work because you can't share, like you can't share a share. So if I'm sh made a share that shares to here on this computer, I can't turn that, I can't go ahead and share that um, drive with another computer that would share it. So it can't like leapfrog. Okay, so that wasn't going to work either. Okay, so that was my, uh, I could set up the shared drive and I could shut up. I could set up a share drive on that computer and I could set up a share drive to look at the the storage on the Azure but I couldn't create a share of a share which would allow me to use my local computer to access it so then what I decided to do was try to th I thought of I saw file sync as an option but I realized quickly realized that file sync the only way you can use file sync is if you have a Windows uh, 2012 server or higher, um, which I didn't have at home. I just had my regular local Windows 10 computer, and I wasn't going to go in uh, buying uh, a license for the Windows 12 server or anything above it either. So what I decided to do was, one, I just go ahead and create the virtual machine on 2012, okay, or 2016 in this case, um, and and um, use that and create a, a, a sync file. So I created a, a file sync and um, and what happened there was that that did sync fine with the um, with the storage account. So that worked fine for so if I want to develop on the um, Azure, if I wanted to develop on just develop on that VM all day, that would work fine. But I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to, you know, I didn't want to spend for 32. I have 32 gigs of RAM at home in my Windows 10 machine, and I wanted to utilize that as 32 gigs of RAM. If I have to buy that every day uh, up on a VM machine, that's going to be kind of costly. Um, so I didn't want to go that approach. But I did see an opportunity here. Okay, which led me to my final solution, which was to combine the number of, and that solved the problem. So what I did was that I created a file shared drive. No, I created the file sync instead of a file shared drive from. So I created the, a file shared folder and use async to connect to the Azure storage. So basically, this allowed me just to create a normal old folder, but with the async client on the machine, I was able to take that folder and sync it with the file storage share. So it wasn't like a share. It was just a, 
it, yet it was it was it wasn't a I wasn't sharing this as a it was like mapping a share to this. I was just taking a folder and through async it would synchronize it with the Azure storage. Okay, so what that did was allow me then to set up a share on that same folder. Okay, so now I had a shared folder of a synced folder. So basically it was both a sync folder and a shared folder. Okay, the shared folder I was going to be able to access from my Windows 10 computer as long as I was on the VPN. Okay, which is, has to do with this point to site VPN network. So as long as I had that running, I could go ahead and access that shared folder and all the files in it from, a, from in this case, my Y drive. And that was synced up with the Azure storage. So that's how I'm able to get the seamless, this whole seamless thing to work from my local computer to the Azure storage. I had to put in this element. So there are two elements, uh, main elements I had to do here. I had to come up and create this private network because without the private network, I can't get it. I can't utilize a share on the, my VM. I have to be within the network and the VPN allows me to do that. Okay, the VPN, the virtual network and the point to site with the VPN allows me to do that. So that's this area that I'm circling right here. In addition to that, the other link was to have this piece, the async piece, which is everything I'm circling here in place. So that once I got to this share, that share was also a sync folder to the storage. So it just, it just passes it right through to the storage and vice versa and goes back the other way. Now, from my perspective, everything I'm doing is going to be based basically logically done from my Windows 10 computer and pushed to this uh, file share. It's not going to be going the other direction, but I do. It, it does stay in sync. This stays in sync with the shared folder. So the shared folder lets me see what's over there on the file storage, file storage. And then this one basically is me accessing this this file here and this just completely pushes it so it's a push from one direction to the other direction so that's my um how i solved this problem and uh i hope you if you want i just wanted to show you how, what the problem i i ran into and how i solved it um in a big picture now to go through all this, these pieces, I have made additional videos. I made another video that's going to show you how I created the virtual network, which is this piece, this circle that I'm circling right now with my, uh, with my pointer. Okay. That's one piece. Um, okay. So the other piece is this, the async piece, and that's this where I'm circling right now with my pointer. So these two videos, I have put in uh, as part two and part three. Um, but what I'm trying to point out is that they're very detailed. So I don't want to put them all into one big giant video um, because it's just way very complex. You might want to, might not want to go that far. But if you want to go that far and go all the way down the detail and set it up for yourself, um, you can do so. And okay, I'm not a network ex expert or anything. But it's a great learning experience, and um, and you know you want to want to do this on your production server or anything. But you this is something to do in your experimental lab server, like what I'm doing. Um, and this will be used. This actual server that I'm this whole solution I've used is going to be how I uh, keep everything up to date up in the Azure um, portal and storage, so that I don't have to um, let it do its work for me as far as backups and manageability. And um, so that's my point for doing this. But um, anyways, I hope you like the rest of the series. But if you don't watch the rest, I hope this did help you uh, understand uh, how to get this started. Okay, thank you very much. Bye.